interview with me. I must admit, Eric, this has been an interview I've been wanting for a long, long time. So I feel very honored that you're giving me this interview. Uh, if you don't know, Eric is a multiple barbershop owner. He's the owner of the Pacino product line, an entrepreneur and a mentor. Thank you. So, Eric, I was lucky enough to go to your seminar downstairs. I learned a hell of a lot about your beginning, humble beginning. If you could uh, repeat that yes. for the camera, for the no UK problem. audience. Yeah, everyone... awesome. So, uh, I basically first started cutting my own hair in my mother's bathroom. And uh, that's kind of when I learned that I had a passion for it. And um, that, that was kind of the beginning for me where I noticed that it was more than just me wanting to look good, more so I wanted to perfect these haircuts. Uh, from there, I started cutting my friends' hair from school. And um, not only did I enjoy cutting their hair, but then I started realizing, man, this is actually taking some time. Uh, I need to start charging. So that was kind of like my first, uh, I guess, entrepreneurial uh, <laughs> uh, way of, 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 of trying to make some extra money. You know, so I was going to school basically uh, with some money in my pocket now because I was cutting all my high school friends' hair. And uh, it felt good, not just because of the money, but it felt good because I was actually making my high school friends look good with these haircuts. That was kind of like the defining point for me to know this is more than just a haircut, you know? Um, I joined the Navy. And at that point, I thought maybe I wanted to do something else, but I always found myself still cutting hair on the boat. And uh, even just when I was out in town with my friends, before we'd go out, I'm like, hey, let me cut your hair. So it was like real important for me to kind of want to, you know, just make everybody around me look good, right? I was like always trying to transform all my friends. And uh, that's, again, where I started to see, okay, you know what, maybe I should go to school for this. So I went to uh, night school to try to get my license. Uh, I had just left the Navy. Um, I did four years for the Navy and I hadn't finished completing my, um, at the time it was like 1500 hours. So I still needed like two more hundred, 200 hours to complete it. So when I left the Navy, uh, I moved back in with my parents. I completed hair school and uh, I never looked back, you know? And uh, when I was staying at my parents' house, it was kind of one of those things where I was like, I knew I wanted more than just to be a barber. You know, I knew I wanted to, uh, you know, one day own my own shop, one day own my own hair products, you know, one day cut celebrities. And uh, I've been fortunate enough, thank God, to do all these things thus far. Uh, I've worked with artists such as Jay-Z, Nas, Mr. Sean P. Diddy Combs, Ludacris, Kevin Hart, the list goes on. Uh, I've basically owned my own barbershop. We franchised. Uh, I've gone out, created my own line of men's hair grooming products. Now we're in one of uh, the number two biggest retail chain store in the United States called Target. Uh, we got the products in there and it's just been a great journey, you know, but uh, the one thing I could say is that, you know, it, it came from just hard work and sacrifice and just consistency of, of doing something that I truly, honestly just loved and enjoyed, which was, you know, a pair of clippers and cutting some hair. Would you attribute your uh, focus because obviously not coming from a business family or something like that would you attribute your focus to learning all the things that you needed to succeed to your time maybe with the military um, to be honest with you I would honestly say it was more about and and this is funny because uh, a friend of my father's one day told me this and that's when it hit home it's called the necessity desperation I was just desperate I just I needed to make money you know I, at that point my son was three years old and uh, I had hit rock bottom you know I couldn't find a job and it was just like man like my son needs to eat and to me I was like if I could do anything and enjoy it and make money why not and that's when I just took barbering seriously because I didn't want to go through that feeling of being hungry anymore. I didn't want to go through that feeling of not seeing my child eat. You know, so that to me is where, you know, I still to, to this day I still think about that. That is what motivates me every day. Is like I never want to go back to that. I know what it feels like not to have anything in that refrigerator when you open it up. I know what it's like to use the restroom in your own house and not have toilet paper. I literally used to go to McDonald's and leave with extra napkins 
don't sell this to McDonald's. But I used to live with extra napkins just to have toilet paper for the house. So I, I'll never forget those days. And it hurt. It was hurtful as a man. And so I think I attribute, I, I really attribute any, any, you know, any part of my success or whatever you call it. You know, I, I still don't feel like I'm as successful as I could possibly one day become. But I attribute that to honesty, to honesty just the desperation and, and the necessity of just living. Okay, so that you've gone beyond the desperation because you've gone on to uh, create your own product line, which goes a bit beyond uh, survival. This is kind of seeking dizzy heights. Yes. What made you decide to create your own product line? Great question. So one of the reasons I created my own brand of our men's hair grooming products is because I started realizing a couple things. The first thing was a lot of the products I was using weren't really good. Not that they weren't good, but they just weren't, um, they weren't doing anything for the types of haircuts and hairstyles I was creating. So it's almost like I had to combine three, four different products that I would say to myself, man, if somebody just came out with a product that did all these different things, you know, from the hold to the texture being better to uh, it not being so, so um, diluted, you know, I wanted something a little thicker. You know, like a pomade, you know, like a matte, but with no shine finish. So the reason I created these products is because I wanted to give my clients, my personal clients, you know, the best styling aid that they could possibly use without me sending them to a store to buy three, four different products to create that hairstyle. So that was kind of one of the biggest reasons. And then after that, I started realizing coming to these hair shows, you know, I'd walk around, I'm like, man, you know, I want to be that guy. I want to be the guy that kind of is just out there selling products. I'm like, because not only can I do the haircut, but I know what these clients need. And with all due respect to some of these brands and some of these products, I felt like they weren't doing the job, you know, at least for my clients. So that was probably one of the biggest reasons. And um, to me, it was just like, I did from a business stand standpoint, also think about just residual income. Like I didn't want for me just to be as good as my last haircut. You know, I do want to leave something back. I do want to leave something you know, one day when I'm not here, you know, leave a legacy, leave something to my kids and to my family. So, you know, with a haircut, a couple weeks later, it grows out. They need to come back, get an air, another haircut. So it's like, you know, I did think about that. You know, I didn't want to just be stuck on just being just a barber. You know, I wanted to do a little bit, I wanted to do a little bit more than just cut hair. Okay, so again, going back to what I just mentioned, mm -hmm. you don't come from an entrepreneurial background. No. You've kind of had to fight tooth and nail for everything that you've achieved in life, and I salute yeah. you for that. Uh, tell me some of the trials and tribulations, because there must have been many. Yeah, I think probably one of the biggest uh, trials and tribulations that I've gone through is probably just, you know, um, the sacrifice, you know, like, you know, all different types of sacrifice from, you know, working the long hours, you know, having a dream and people not believing in it, uh, not having a blueprint, you know, that was the biggest thing, you know. I'm the type of person, I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to, to, to be mentored. And it's funny because now I'm doing the mentoring, but I've had to create different ways of trying to figure things out because we didn't have social media. We didn't have YouTube. You know, there wasn't a book out there that was gonna teach me how to create a barbershop and create my own brand of products. There was nothing out there. You know, they were, they, there wasn't these mentorship programs that now you see. Um, so I think that was pretty much, you know, the biggest trial tribulations, just not knowing. I just, I didn't know where to start. I honestly didn't know where to start. I didn't know I had to go look for a chemist. I didn't know, you know, that you have to get your packaging from one company, get a designer to, to create your label, uh, get with another company to, to formulate the actual product, uh, and then combine all these things for just the finished product, you know? So, these are some of the things I just had no idea, but thank God I'll say what has helped me is Google, to be honest with you. Google has helped me in so many ways, and I tell people that all the time. I'm like, look, if it wasn't for Google, I probably wouldn't have a lot of things that I have, but you have to do your homework, you have to do the research. So, you know, I'd say that was probably the biggest trial tribulation, just the not knowing, not being educated on a lot of things. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your product line, okay. the range that you have and which one's gaining the most popularity at the moment? Okay, so right now uh, we have three uh, men's hair um, grooming products. 
Uh, one is the matte finish, which is a great hold, but has no shine to it, which a lot of people like with these uh, pompadour haircuts, and it kind of gives it more of the natural feel, but with a great hold. We have a pomade, that's a firm, flexible hold. That one does give some shine. And then we have a creme, which is a cream styling wax that is kind of like in between the pomade and the matte, and it does have a semi-shine finish. We also have a beard oil. Beards are very popular right now, so we have a beard oil to help rejuvenate that beard. We have a beard and face scrub, so you could uh, wash your face and wash your beard at the same time. Um, we also have a, um, a razor bump soother for the client that has a lot of razor bumps. It helps avoid and eliminate these razor bumps. Uh, we also just got done coming out with a two-in-one shampoo, shampoo and conditioner. And last but not least, we also have a black mask. Black mask is, is really popular right now. We can't hold it in stock. It sells out all the time. But our two most popular products right now is the matte finish and the black mask. And then the pomade is like right behind them. So those are, I'd say, like our top three products right now. Okay, so taking off your barber's head, because I often say this to all the barbers that I see with empty shelves in their barber shop, and put on your entrepreneur's head and tell me why, in your own words, you feel it's important that every barber should have product in their shop. So for me, I don't think I could stress it and emphasize it enough to barbers. It's probably one of the easiest sells. It's probably gonna increase your sales dramatically. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but there's companies out there that live off of just selling products. You know, Supercuts is one of them. Yes, yeah, so, I heard from Danny, 48, uh -huh. 49,000 pound, one member of staff sold product in one month from Danny Am Amarin. Yeah. Anyway, I'll leave That's it to That's so crazy, <laughs> yeah, you see? At the end of the day, it's like, it's so easy for you to actually style somebody's hair. And once it looks good, the first thing they're gonna ask you is, hey, what was that that you put in my hair? Because what do they wanna do? They wanna go to the store and buy it. If you have it on your shelf, if it's already there, they're gonna leave with that because they are gonna try to emulate and they're gonna try to copy the same style that you just did. You know, so it's like, it's a money maker. It's like, it's an easy sell. Uh, a lot of times you're able to get 100% profit at wholesale price when you work with some of these brands. They'll give it to you at wholesale price, you're gonna sell it and make 100% profit. You know, some of these products cost as much as a haircut. Our product is $16. A lot of haircuts that people are charging, $15, $20. You're basically almost doing a whole nother haircut by just selling a product. Putting something into a bag. There That's you go. it, exactly. <laughs> and before you know it, a month later, they're coming right back, not only for a haircut, but for some more hair product. So barbers need to look at it a little bit differently. They have to look at it as a system. As much as you take off, the, you brush down the hair with the, brush down the neck with the brush and take off the cape, the next part of the system is to exactly. introduce them to, to what? Product. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and I tell people this all the time, you know, you don't have to just get stuck on one brand. Be diverse, have a bunch of different brands in there. You know, it's like when you walk into a sneaker store, you go to Foot Locker, you don't just see Nike on the wall. You don't see just one pair of white Nikes and a pair of black Nikes and that's it. You see a diverse a range of different sneaker companies, different styles, high tops, low tops, you know? So it's the same thing with products, it's like, Give your client something to choose from. He might just ask you, hey, what's this cool looking product about? You know what, I wanna try it. You know, they'll open up smell, oh, this thing smells amazing. Will this work in my, in my hair? Yeah, sure, sit down, I'm gonna put some in it. Let you tell me. Oh yeah, I, I want this. It's, it's that easy. And barbers, I think, sometimes just don't understand that you could really make extra income just upselling by selling a product. By concentrating on the fade, they're fading away the profits. That just sprung to mind. Yeah, exactly, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> okay, so talking about profitability and systems, I've seen that you've been promoting your, uh, your shop through Booksy. Why right. have you chose Booksy and an appointment system? Uh, so Booksy, um, ironically enough, Booksy, one of my friends actually was working for Booksy. So he told me about it, and at first I was like unsure about it, but for me, it's just an easy system. You know, it's an easy system and it just makes it that much easier to organize your day in and day out. You know, um, it used to happen all the time. You're out to dinner with your family. 
the phone is ringing, you're getting a whole bunch of text messages, you're trying to return these text messages or you're trying to get on the phone, and you're taking time away from your family, you're taking time away from yourself. And so to me, it was like, you know what, I'd rather people just, while I'm sleeping, or while I'm enjoying my dinner, or while I'm just enjoying my own time, you can just book through the Booksy app. So that was kind of like key for me where it's like, you know, it just made sense. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, I am very old school where I do like to kind of speak to my clients, but you know, now I've learned where it's like, I'd rather speak to a client when they sit in the chair as opposed to on the phone, you know, cause it's never about, hey, can I just get a haircut appointment? Hey, so what are you doing this weekend? Hey, you know, how is this that you told me about? And it's like, it's hard to tell somebody, hey, listen, I don't mean to be rude, but I'll talk to you when you sit, when you get to my chair. You know, so the client doesn't know no better. They don't know if you're in the middle of a haircut, you know, the client might be stressing you out because he's really picky, and yet he's asking you a bunch of questions on the phone, and you're like, man, just book your appointment, buddy. I'll talk to you when you get here, you know? So, uh, you know, people have to kind of respect people's time, you know? I tell that to people all the time. I'm like, there's a lot of jobs out there that you can't have your phone on. So from nine to five, you're stuck. You're not, you can't return a phone call, you can't return a text. Why us barbers can't do, be the same way, you know? You're gonna give that much more a service to the client that's actually sitting in a chair and they're gonna appreciate it that much more. Okay, so by all accounts, you know, on the outside, people would assume that you're living some celebrity, big shot lifestyle. Do you spend time in the barbershop or indeed are you a big time No, I, listen, I, I love going to the barbershop. I, just yesterday, I was actually, uh, I went to a barbershop just to stop in. Uh, they were doing some kind of, some type of showcase. So whenever I can get to a barbershop, whether it's my barbershop or anybody else's barbershop, I love being in the barbershop. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, one could probably see my page and probably see some illustrious things on there, but believe me, there's some other stuff that I put on there on my stories that just everyday stuff that, hey, you know, my daughter runs me. Like, I'm constantly running after my little daughter. Like, my life is my family, you know? So it's like, you know, I work this hard to just you know, try, try to give my daughter and my son, you know, whatever it is that they want, you know, whether they want to go uh, to Disney or they want to just, you know, go to, we love going to this one place uh, off the wall where we're just jumping on trampolines all day, you know? It's like, you, you just got to enjoy life, you know? And, and that's the one thing I've learned is to try to balance my life a little bit better and it can't just always be work, work, work and work. You know, you got to, you need time for yourself as well. Okay. And do you actually still cut in your own shop floor? Uh, not as much as I used to, no. Not at all. Mm -mm. I, I wish I could, but I just, between the brand and, and bookings, it's like, it's hard because I tried that system to keep some clients, but man, the, the clients, you know, they get upset with you when you can't make it on time or when you can't be there for them. So I just, I had to disattach, you know, disattach myself from the barbershop in that sense because the clients, the minute you give them a good haircut, they're hooked. They really want you to cut their hair the next time. And they'll tell you, oh, it's okay if you can't cut in two weeks, how about in three weeks? So then you have to commit to that. And then three weeks come around and if you have something else you have to do, they don't want to hear that, you know? Or they might wait and I just, I feel bad pushing appointments back and pushing them back. So it's like, I am just, you know. To retire yourself. Yeah, yeah, basically, yep, yeah, basically. Ultimately, this interview is going out on to Barber Evo, which is a UK publication. I've seen just the other day you was in Spain and you're kind of traveling around all of uh, South America. The big question is, when are you coming to the UK? Yeah. And second question is, when are we going to see the Pacino signature line in the in UK? UK as yes, well? no, that's a great question. So I have been spending a lot of times, uh, a lot of time in Brazil. Uh, more so than probably any other country. We're actually working something in Brazil as we speak, uh, as far as distribution. But my next step is uh, to get to the UK. You know, I know there's a, a great support team out there. I know there's a great following out there. And, you know, believe me, if we could be in UK tomorrow with the products, we would be there. But unfortunately, it, it takes time, you know. And uh, I would love to get to the UK as soon as possible, maybe do a seminar, maybe do some classes, um, you know, Again, the UK, I've, I've gone there, believe it or not, to, uh, to London, uh, and to Heathrow Airport, uh, quite a few times when I was traveling with uh, P. Diddy as his barber, thanks to uh, my good friend Curtis Smith. I always like to mention Curtis Smith because I, I never like for anybody to think like, oh, that's Pacino's client. Like, no, that was Curtis Smith's client, 
and he couldn't make it, so he would put me on to cutting Mr. Sean P. Diddy Combs when he'd go to uh, London. And uh, it was great, you know, I, I really do enjoy um, the UK, so I, I would hope to be there hopefully this year at some point, if, if I could possibly make it out there, maybe London. I think London will probably be my first stop. So going back to your entrepreneurial skills, I kind of, after this interview, I can see you're a visionary. You can kind of see things that other barbers can't see. What would you say that the single biggest mistake you see other barbers making that could stop them being another Pacino? Nice, good question. Um, I would probably say, here's the thing. You have to be original, right? You cannot, you can't be a carbon copy of somebody else. And I think sometimes I see that and it's almost like I wanna stop a barber and say, hey listen, I get it. You wanna get to the next level, but you're gonna have to figure out a way to do it that's different than the way that I did it or another barber did it. You know, you can't come up and look like the same person twice. It's just not gonna happen. You gotta be original, you have to be creative. And I think that's the thing that sometimes, uh, not even just barbers, but uh, people who wanna be entrepreneurs, what we call want wantrepreneurs, they wanna be entrepreneurs, right? Is you gotta figure out a strategic way to do things a little differently, to be creative, to have some type of a vision. So for me, with my marketing and my branding, we try to do everything where it's gonna kind of like draw the attention, get some type of engagement, you know? Um, you have to be able to, to see what is it that people want now. You know, you can't think about what they wanted before. So before I used to promote and market my, my uh, products and my brand and everything that I was doing through TV and radio. Well, guess what? TV and radio isn't the way to go anymore. It's all about social media. So now how can we get people on social media to react, to get engagement? That's the biggest key is how do you get people to pay attention to what you're trying to do? You know, in a way where you're strategic, but yet professional. You know, you don't want to do things for attention, but it's gonna bring you bad attention and bad publicity. So you have to, you know, it, it's, it's a fine line between trying to get attention, but getting the wrong attention. So uh, again, we just, my motto has always been simple, but clean. If you look at our brand and you look at our products, from our content that we put out there, it's simplicity simplicity to me goes a long way we just want you know when we created the brand i wanted the brand to be something where 20 40 50 years from now it was still going to have its own classic identity you know i didn't want to put any crazy logos on there or you know some something that right now was cool but tomorrow wasn't going to be cool you know so at an early age I, I learned that you know sometimes less is more okay you know i could sit here talking to you for hours and hours but I'm just going to ask you two more questions. No problem. Yeah. Um, you've done a lot. You've achieved a lot. What was your one single greatest moment in your barbering career? In my uh, barbering career? Yeah. Um, I'd probably say, hmm. Uh, I'd probably say my wish list, right? As a young barber, and I think every barber kind of has like their, their wish list of who they wanted to cut. So me being from New York City, growing up in New York, growing up around hip hop, uh, I always wanted to cut, you know, the icons that I looked up to at the time, which were Nas from Queens, Jay-Z, one of the greatest rappers of all time, and P. Diddy, because I enjoyed his entrepreneurial side. And that was like my wish to, man, maybe one day I could cut these guys. And, you know, I think, Sometimes you just speak it into existence, and it happened. I've been fortunate enough to cut Mr. Jay-Z, uh, Mr. Sean Jay-Z Carter's hair, actually um, cut his hair for an album cover. Uh, Kingdom Come is the name of the album. Uh, his main barber is Johnny Cakes from New Jersey, uh, but I guess Johnny couldn't make it, so they called me. I went out there. Actually, they called Curtis. He couldn't make it either, so Curtis called me. So I went out there and cut Mr. Jay-Z's hair. Uh, I was fortunate enough to cut Nas's hair, and, um, in Central Pays in France. That was a great experience. And I've also been able to cut uh, Mr. Sean P. Diddy's uh, hair. I went on tour with him for like a whole month in Europe. And uh, sometimes when he's in Miami, I cut his hair as well. So 
that to me probably, knowing I cut those three after that, it was like I just wanted to drop the clippers and just walk away. And I'm like, all right, that's it, I'm done. Because, you know, you can only do but so many haircuts. But once I was able to cut three iconic figures in this industry that I looked up to, I was like, that's it, I'm done. Like, I, there was nobody else I, I wanted to cut. That was it. It's funny you should say that because after having this interview with you, I'm thinking I'm going to sling the cameras away. I've got, the, I've got the same feeling as you after interviewing you. Oh man, I appreciate that. Thank you so <laughs> much, man. That's awesome. Honestly, I'm really uh, honored and humbled by that, to be honest. You know, it's, you know, we don't know who we touch every day, you know, and it's just like, you know, after I cut their hair, I just felt like, I felt inspired. I was like, wow, like, from where I started and my vision, you know, to like now being in another country with Nas, like, like I grew up listening to his music and like he's a storyteller and it was just like, wow, like what I love doing, I'm actually doing it for somebody who I really look up to. So, you know, again, it, it's just a great feeling, you know, to be able to do what you love and then share it with somebody that you actually look up to. Okay, so I am gonna let you go now, but it's just one last question. Uh -huh. What would you say to a young up and coming barber who wanted to aspire to who you are today? What would be your parting words to give him that kick up the rear that he needed to achieve everything that he wanted to achieve in barbering? So basically what I would tell uh, up and coming barber uh, is just stay focused, uh, know what your goal is and execute. You know, consistency is the key and don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. Okay, can you give us a little bit more than that? Because the thing about it is, knowing what I know now, it is as simple as that. Right. But for a young person to hear that, it's like, there's more. Yeah, so yeah. can you expand on that? Because I know yeah, everything that you've said there is absolutely true, but they don't believe right. it's that simple. So give us a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I would definitely say, you know, write down your plan. I write everything down. Like if you look at my notes on my iPhone, you will see a long list of just things that I need to get done, things that I need to execute. So probably the biggest key I could give somebody is just write whatever it is that you wanna do, write it down, and do not erase it until it gets done. You know, that's probably one of the biggest things that I've learned is to just write any thought that I have, write it down. After that, do your homework on it, Google it, find out more about it, get out there and get it done. Because at the end of the day, nobody's gonna do it for you, nobody's gonna put in as much hours and as much work than what you're gonna put in. So I would definitely say for young up and coming barbers, it's like, you know, you gotta figure out what is, if you wanna just be a great barber and do great haircuts, do as many haircuts as you can. You know, do not get intimidated by the different textures of hair. That's what happened to me early on. I was like, man, I can't really do curly textured hair. And I would mess up some haircuts, but then I learned eventually. And then I started getting even better at those haircuts than I did on straight hair. You know, so it's like one of those things, know what your weaknesses are. Be honest with yourself. Know exactly what you're good at and what you're not good at. And what you're not good at, work extra hard to make sure you become better. You know, that would, that's where I would definitely say that is the difference between somebody who uh, continues to grow is knowing what they're not good at and getting better at those things because now you become complete. You know, if you're only good at one thing, if you're only good at doing a number two in a skin fade, but you're not good with shears, guess what? You're never gonna grow. So one day when somebody needs you on a movie set or to cut a client that's paying top dollar or that they might want to take you on tour with them, but you can't use the shears, guess what? Your opportunity was there. It's gone because you did not want to get better at something that you know is your weakness. Okay, so there you go, guys. It's as simple as that, writing it down and doing doing a little bit every day to get closer. And if you do that, you'll see how difficult it is until it becomes a habit and becomes easy. So take heed on those words. Yeah. Eric Pacino, thank you ever so much for giving me no half an hour of your time. <laughs> I feel so blessed and privileged that no you've problem. done that. Anytime. And I wish you every success in thank whatever you. the next thing on yeah, your yeah. Uh, master plan yeah, in yeah, life is. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah? Thank so you. You're very welcome. Awesome, thank you very much, appreciate it.